But let's jump in. Uh, th this has one of the one of the most impactful parables for me personally in it um, of all of them that Jesus shared, and we'll we'll end the episode with that because it's at the end of chapter eighteen. But let's begin with verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? It's almost as if they're jockeying for, for preferential position in the quorum, or who, who's, who's the greatest? Who, who's done the most, or who's the most beloved of the whole group? Or it's like my kids asking, which is the favorite child in the family? And I say, well, whoever's not asking the question. <laughs> That's a good answer. Uh, I love Jesus' answer because you can picture all this group of, of people who, who are sitting there thinking, he's, he's surely going to pick me, and verse 2 says, And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. You'll notice the little child probably isn't sitting there concerned whether or not he's the favorite or the preferred. Mm -hmm. The little child is probably fairly comfortable in his or her own skin and is going about life meekly. And Jesus pulls this little child into the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You'll notice there's, there's a big difference between being childish and being childlike, and he's asking us to be like a child. King Benjamin spoke about this in Mosiah chapter 3, verse 19, he says, "'Becometh as a child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord seeth fit to inflict upon him, even as a child does submit to his father.'" So I wonder if Jesus has some of this in, in his mind as well. And it's also interesting, Matthew likes to use the phrase, kingdom of heaven, because he wants to protect the, the too frequent use of the name God. So Matthew doesn't often use the phrase kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God is ruled by a king. In fact, when Jesus says elsewhere in scriptures, the kingdom of God has come to you, the implication is the king, which represents a kingdom, is there. And notice what Jesus is doing. People in the ancient world knew that kings had power, authority, prestige. And Jesus is saying, the kingdom that I represent is a kingdom that's led by a son, a child, someone like Jesus. It's really quite powerful. There, there's another Book of Mormon prophet who, who brings up kind of this idea of, of meekness and humility. It's, it's Nephi in the book of Helaman in chapter 12 where, where he's lamenting the, the foolishness and the wickedness and the stiff-neckedness of, of men, and in, in part of his little uh, uh, lament, he says in verse 7, Oh, how great is the nothingness of the children of men, yea, even they are less than the dust of the earth. For behold, the dust of the earth moveth hither and thither to the dividing asunder at the command of our great and everlasting God. Contrast that with what King Benjamin taught about little children and what Jesus is now teaching his disciples in the old world about little children. A little child is meek and humble, and when given a command in, in, in an ideal setting, when given a command by a parent, a child doesn't question the parent, doesn't tell them, that's dumb, why, why do I need to do that, or why do I need to do it that way? They just do it. And I, my prayer is, as I, as I work with my own little children, sometimes I'll see reflected in them that quiet uh, trust in parents, and the thought is, man, I could do better with my relationship as a son of, of Heavenly Father in how I respond. Look at verse 4, "'Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven.'" I love that, that the, the angels aren't up there giving us merit badges or giving us points for making a lot of money or, or being popular. It's whoever puffs him or herself up is going to be brought low. We, we've learned that from extensive scriptures in the Old Testament, and those who are humble 
the Lord will one day exalt. What a beautiful pattern for all of us to consider as we move forward.